the book of John this morning, the book of John, chapter number 18, John chapter number 18. This is the month of December, and uh, Lord willing, every service uh, this month, except for the 31st uh, Sunday, we will uh, be bringing a Christmas message, something to do with the Christmas story in some way, shape, or form, why Jesus came. This morning, we're going to talk about joy to the world. The Lord is come. And of course, we have met here today, of course, to honor the one uh, uh, who this, uh, these festive events are all about, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I say to you this morning that it is true, joy has come to the world because the Lord has come. Have you ever wondered why was Jesus born? I mean, we, we know, of course, to come to, to die for the sins of the world, but there are many other reasons why Jesus came to this earth. And the Bible is very explicit uh, on why Jesus Christ came, why the Lord has come, in essence, why there is joy uh, to the world because the Lord has come. And so today what I want to do is, is give you some reasons why the Lord Jesus Christ came, why there is joy in the world, why the Lord is come. And before we go any further uh, and read the scripture, let's pray. Father, we are grateful this morning again for this blessed day. This blessed day that's set aside to worship you. We thank you for each person that's here. If there's someone here today that doesn't know Christ, that they, we pray they would come to him. We pray also for the Christians that are here today that we would be encouraged. We would be informed. We would also, Lord, uh, if need be, that we would do business with you uh, in our lives in some way. We love you today. And again, thank you for coming for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. John chapter 18, verse 37, the Bible says very explicitly, Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So the first reason, and you'll see these on the board, the first reason is that Jesus Christ came to declare truth, or to declare the truth. Pilate uh, asked, uh, he said, what is truth? In, in, verse, uh, uh, in verse 38, he says, what is truth? And of course, Jesus had already answered this question before, when Jesus said way back in John 14, I am the way the truth, and the life. So we know that Jesus Christ is the truth. And one of the reasons the Lord Jesus Christ came, which he tells us here in John 18, 37, that one of the reasons why he was born, so that he should wear, bear witness unto the truth. He would come and he would declare the truth. He would come and declare what truth really is. Now, boy, we live in a world where you don't know what is true and what's not true, right? Uh, have you heard the term fake news lately? Uh, uh, do you believe everything you see on television well, or, or in the newspaper? Let me tell you something. If you do, then you're wrong uh, because there's a lot of things that's made up in our world today. And, and there's a lot of lies that go out in our world today. And you better make sure uh, of, of what is the truth before you uh, 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 glibly do that. One of the things that I made up my mind many, many years ago was that I was never, I, I never wanted to, anyhow, I never wanted to say anything from this pulpit that wasn't the absolute truth. Uh, because you hear a lot of things, and a lot of people say a lot of things, and then it, you find out later on, well, that was not the truth. And so things need to be verified, and things need to be checked out. Well, let me tell you something. When the Lord Jesus Christ came to this earth, He came, and He was the truth, and, and He declared the truth, and He verified the truth of Scripture. I remind you that Jesus Christ did something that none of us can say we have not done. He never lied. The Lord Jesus Christ never lied. The Lord Jesus Christ never contradicted Scripture. 
Uh, everything that he said verified the scripture. Matter of fact, over in Matthew chapter 5, he said, I am not come to destroy the law, but he said, I have come to fulfill the law. I've not come to destroy it. That's what many people thought he was, had come to do. But he is the fulfillment of all scripture. Now, he has come to fulfill the law and not to destroy it. He's come to tell us the truth and not destroy it. And we can be thankful for that today. Everything that Jesus Christ said was true. 100% true. Now, none of us can say that this morning. As much as we try, as much as we want to, now sometimes we don't want to, but as much as we want to try to tell the truth and, and always tell the truth and never get anything wrong or never fib about something or whatever, we, we always uh, do that. Now, the Lord Jesus Christ never did that. Everything he said was true. You know, when the Lord Jesus Christ said that in the beginning... God made them male and female. You know what he was doing? He was telling us the truth about creation. When Jesus Christ spoke about creation, he was there, of course. He was part of the uh, uh, creation, uh, uh, part of being, uh, of doing the creation, of being the creator. And, and, and he said at the beginning, God made them male and female. Listen, he knew exactly what had happened at creation because he was there. And when he spoke about it, he was 100% accurate when he said that. Now, I got, I got news for you. There's going to be a lot of people surprised one day. There's going to be a lot of people surprised one day when they find out God truly did create this world in, in six days and rested on the seventh. There's going to be a lot of people surprised because there's a lot of people that don't buy into that these days and how sad that is, right? But Jesus said, hey, at the beginning, at the beginning, we, uh, we're told, of course, that we've come from some uh, uh, protozoa and some blob or whatever. No, nope. God uh, reached down and created out of the dust. He created Adam. And then he took uh, a rib from Adam and he made Eve. And uh, uh, that's the way God set it up. That's the way God made it. And then he brought them together and married them right there in the Garden of Eden. And, and God set that up and he created all that we see here today. Jesus Christ is truth. He came to declare the truth. Uh, what is the truth about Jonah and the whale? You know, a lot of people say, ah, well, that's a good Bible story, you know, but I can't believe that, that uh, some guy was swallowed by a whale and lived in a whale for three days. Well, do you know that Jesus Christ talked about that? Do you know that the Lord Jesus Christ over in Matthew chapter 12, he talked about that and he said, uh, uh, as, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days, so the Son of Man will be in the belly of the earth for three days? And when Jesus said that, then guess what? That just, again, verified the Scripture. Do you think Jesus was lying when he talked about Jonah being in the whale for three days? No, he wasn't. He was telling the truth. What, what, is the, what is the truth about the wisdom of Solomon? You know, we hear about Solomon, and of course we can read about it in the Bible, and we, we hear about it. And, and what is the truth behind the wisdom of Solomon? Was he as wise as, as, as it's made out to be? Well, Jesus even spoke about that. And he talked about how the queen of the south, the queen of Sheba, came to, to see Solomon and, and just could not believe all that he had and all of his wisdom. And then Jesus made this statement, but a greater than Solomon, and he even said in the, in the verse before that, Matthew chapter 12, a greater than Jonah is even here. And when he said all of those things, he spoke truth. Everything he said was 100% true. He came to declare the truth. His works also declared the truth about God. Uh, uh, he said that whoever believes on me does not have to abide in darkness, but can, can, can abide in truth or can abide in the light. Uh, we don't have to abide in the darkness of what's true and what's not true when it comes to God and spiritual matters because Jesus has come to tell us the truth and to put us into the light. Listen, Jesus Christ went about doing good things, did he not? The Bible even says he went about doing good. Did Jesus ever help anybody? Yes, he did. Did he ever heal anybody? Yes, he did. Uh, uh, did he ever uplift anybody? Yes, he did. Uh, uh, did he ever preach great messages? Yes, he did. And when he did all of those things, you know what? He was declaring the truth about God in, in this way. He was declaring the truth. He was, he was telling us what God is like and telling us the truth about God. And he was telling us that God is love. 
God is love. When Jesus Christ walked on planet earth, let me tell you something, and he did all those things to help people, to heal people, to uplift people, to preach to people, to teach to people, to, to encourage them and help them in every way. Let me tell you something. He showed the truth that God is truly love. I'll remind you this morning that God is love. He went about doing good. But then he also raised people from the dead. Did you know that? Jesus Christ raised people from the dead. Tell me somebody he raised from the dead. Does anybody know anybody he raised from the dead? Lazarus. Lazarus. Everybody thinks about Lazarus. Lazarus. He raised Lazarus from the dead. Uh, Was there anybody else? Anybody got anybody else he raised from the dead? Jairus' daughter. I hear that. Anybody else? How about the widow's son? Uh, 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 They were actually uh, taking him to be buried. The widow's son of Nain. And Jesus broke up the funeral uh, 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 ceremony. I've told you the story about this preacher who said, well, I want to find out what, uh, i got to preach this funeral for somebody, I want to find out what Jesus said at funerals. There's no words of Jesus at funerals. You know what what he did? He just broke them all up, is what he did. Uh, He just broke them all up when he went to them. And so, uh, uh, there are no words of that. But anyhow, Jesus rose uh, uh, the dead. He he raised the dead. Uh, and, And listen, That also shows us something about the truth about God. What does it show us? That he's life. That he's life. See, Jesus came to declare the truth. Everything he said was 100% truth. You could take it to the bank because he is the truth. And then his works that he did even, not just his words that he spoke, but the works that he did prove the truth to us about God, that he is love and that he is life. And so the, one of the reasons why the Lord Jesus Christ came, one of the reasons why the joy to the world the Lord has come is because he came to declare truth, truth. Secondly, you'll see this on the board and you'll see the verse that goes along with that. He was born to destroy the devil and the works of the devil. He was born, Jesus Christ was born to destroy the devil, the works of the devil. You see there 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8 where it says, He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. The devil. He was manifested. He was made flesh so that he would destroy the devil or destroy the works of the devil. Now, the Bible, that verse instructs us in a couple of things. Do you see in that verse where it says the devil's a sinner? Do you all see that in that verse? When did the devil start sinning? From the beginning. From the beginning. And and, and listen, the devil is proud. Uh, a proud angel and he's proud of his rebellion against God and the characteristic activity of Satan himself Lucifer uh, this fallen angel is he is a sinner and he loves to sin Uh, the uh, characterization of him is that he loves to sin think about this the chief characteristic of the devil is to sin. The chief characteristic of the Lord Jesus Christ is to save. Think about that. The chief characteristic of the devil is to sin. The chief characteristic of our Lord Jesus Christ is to save. Now, all right, let me get everybody's attention. Everybody, you don't have to do this literally, but everybody put your thinking cap on here for just a minute, all right? Get everybody's attention. The reason that the Son of God appeared, or one of the main reasons, is to destroy the devil's work. What is the devil's work? All right? All right? Morally. Morally. The devil, uh, uh, his work is an enticement to sin. What Satan tries to do, one of his works, see, Jesus has come to destroy the works of the devil. And one of the works of the devil is to tempt us or entice us to sin. That is one of his works. So I say to you, morally, Satan's work is to entice us to sin. Physically, physically, his work is the infliction of disease. Uh, we have that sin nature, and, and, and God allows this, of course, but, but Satan comes along and he wants to inflict us with physical disease and physical harm in some way is, is the work of Satan. And then intellectually, 
the work of Satan is to seduce us into error and to heresy. Those are the works of Satan. Did you get that morally? The work of Satan is to tempt us or entice us to sin. Physically, it's the infliction of disease. Intellectually, it is seduction into error. And and let me tell you something. Satan still assaults us in our soul, our body, and our mind every day of our lives. But Christ has come to destroy his works. Now, hang with me. You say, well, it hadn't been quite destroyed yet. Well, just hang with me. The destruction is a a loosing as as if his works were chains which which bind us. And and we know, of course, again, that in in an absolute sense, they have not been destroyed. But the word here in in 1 John chapter 3 and verse 8, when it talks about destroy, does not mean to liquidate or annihilate, but rather to deprive of force, render inoperative, conquer and overthrow. Now, we know that the devil is still busy out here doing his his wicked works, uh, and he's out here to destroy us morally, physically, uh, 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 spiritually, intellectually, every way. Uh, He's trying to destroy us, but Jesus Christ has come. And Jesus Christ has defeated Satan. And guess what? We can escape from his tyranny. We do not have to be bound by him anymore. Uh, 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 the, the chains have been loosed. Now, he's still going to attack us. And, and he, his, his works are still there until Jesus comes and finally gets rid of him for good one day. But we do not have to be bound by that. He has come to destroy the works of the devil. I ask you this question. Is Jesus Christ superior to Satan? Why, sure he is. Yes, he is. He showed that he was superior to the devil. One way he showed that he was superior to the devil is in the temptation. Jesus was tempted three ways, and yet he succeeded and and, and did not fall into sin. Another way that Jesus showed that he was superior to Satan is real simple. He would cast out demons. He would cast out demons. Were the demons stronger than Jesus was? No, they were not. Jesus was stronger than they were, stronger than they are. And then, of course, we know that Jesus destroyed the works of the devil because you know what the greatest work of the devil that he had concocted in his mind was? I'm going to destroy Jesus Christ himself. I'm going to destroy Jesus Christ himself. And so he got the, he got the chief priest, he got all the rulers together, the religious rulers of, uh, uh, of Jerusalem and Judea. They all came together and got all the people riled up. And what did the people say? Crucify him, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And what did they do to Jesus? They went and hung him on a tree. And there he died. And you know what Satan and all his hordes were saying? We have won. We have won. We have proved that we are stronger than God himself. But then three days later, what happened? The resurrection. Three days later, Jesus walked out. And I wonder what Satan was saying then. Oh, we did not. We were not able to keep him. We have not won. Jesus has truly come to destroy our works and the works of the devil. Jesus told his disciples, he said, go ye therefore and and teach all nations. What are we supposed to teach all nations? I'll tell you, the main thing we're supposed to teach them, that Jesus is alive. That the works of the devil have been destroyed. Matter of fact, in Revelation chapter 1, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and death. That's what Jesus said. Jesus has come. Now, right now, we don't have to be under the tyranny of, of the works of the devil. Many times we allow ourselves to, to uh, uh, fall into sin. We allow ourselves to fall into error. We allow ourselves to, to uh, this, this disease or, or uh, uh, sickness that we have, we allow it to, to make us think wrong of God. But let me tell you something. Uh, we don't have to be under that tyranny anymore because Jesus has come to destroy the works of the devil. Thirdly, he was born to die for sinners. 
He was born to die for sinners. John chapter 12, you see the verse up there. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause, for this cause, came I unto this hour. Jesus Christ came to die for sinners. And I'll remind you this morning that none of us fully understands what it costs God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son to forgive us our sins. We'll we'll never really be able to understand that. We sometimes, you know, pray, well, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And, and uh, we, we, we really don't stop to think about how costly it was to God the Father and God the Son to make that prayer possible. And, I, and, and listen, those who are not Christians, they, they certainly don't appreciate it. They certainly don't appreciate it. Matter of fact, some mock it. I read this story about this man who was asked whether he thought God could forgive some terrible sin. And this man replied glibly. He said, well, forgive? (laughs) Well, that's his business. And uh, let me tell you something. A lot of people just glibly think, well, that's just God's business. Of course he's just going to forgive sin. And And we fail to think about how much it costs God the Father and God the Son. We'll, we'll never really understand totally how much salvation cost him. We'll never really understand the, the, the suffering that our Lord Jesus Christ went through. We can, we can try to imagine, but we'll never totally understand it. And we certainly will never be able to understand the time when God the Father turned his back on his son. They had never been a time from eternity past that God the Father and God the Son had not been in 100% fellowship. But there came a time for about a three-hour period where it didn't happen. And you know why that did? Because of me. Because of you. The truth that Jesus came to die for sinners. He says, for this cause I came out into the world. It even starts with his name. Harley read this morning, Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. What did it say? Stick, stick that back up there real quick for me. She shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name, what? Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Jesus means Savior. You can go back to the other frame. Jesus means Savior. And let me tell you something. Bill Gaither wrote the song many years ago. Uh, uh, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. There's just something about that name. Master, Savior, Jesus. Like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will pass away. But there's something about that name even in his birth name it is declared that jesus christ has come to die for sinners and there's something about that name because it means savior now think about this with me your birthday as long as you're here on planet earth is celebrated uh uh you know we have every night you know we do celebrate uh now uh uh, Martin Luther King and George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, and a couple others, you know, we'll, we'll hear about every year. You know, we'll celebrate their birth, quote, celebrate their birthdays. It's just a free day off. I don't get my mail that day, and the banks are closed. Uh, so that's, that's about what it is. Uh, and some of you get the day off. But think about this. Whose birthday have we celebrated for 2,000 years? The Lord Jesus Christ. Because he came to die for sinners. The truth that Christ came to die for sinners was declared also in his life. Uh, Mark 10, 45, for even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to to minister to others and to give his life a ransom for many. For he uh, he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And, And so Jesus Christ came to die for sinners. For this hour came I into this world, he says. Uh, uh, it was declared in his death, but God commended his love toward us and that, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
Jesus Christ came to die for sinners. Now, when you and I were born, when you were born, it was a glorious day, wasn't it? Do you remember it? It was a glorious day. Your mom and daddy looked at that little bundle of joy and said, Man, this is going to be good. This is going to be fun. And then a few hours later, you found out it may not be going to be as much fun as what we thought. We get them little uh, bundles of joy, and boy, we think it's going to be good. And then before long, we're trying to give them away to somebody or something. This is going to be good, boy. This, this is going to be fun. This is, this is our, our, uh, our, our little bundle of joy. Well, we find out that that's a sinner, a little sinner. But we find out the only one that uh, was truly a, a bundle of joy and stayed a bundle of joy was the Lord Jesus Christ. But then he died for us. We find out that we're sinners. But Christ died for us. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 2 and verse 9, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that He, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. And so why did Jesus come? Just so we could have Christmas? Did He come so that we could just uh, 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 get some gifts? Did He come just so we could have a Christmas tree? Did He come so that we could just have a bunch of parties? Did He come so that we could put some lights up and some, and some decorations up? Why did Jesus come? Well, we've seen three reasons, and here's the fourth. He came to draw the lost into Himself. He came to draw the lost into Himself. The Bible says in Luke chapter 19 and verse 10, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. You know, when Jesus walked on planet Earth, His focus was upon sinners. Jesus even said in Matthew 9, 13, I am, I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. His purpose was saving the lost. Matthew 18, 11, For the Son of Man has come to seek uh, and save that which was lost. His uplifting was to draw sinners. He said, uh, and, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. And His invitation uh, uh, to be saved uh, uh, was, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He came. To draw the lost unto himself. Again, when I was born, I was a sinner. But Jesus Christ came. And there was a day many, many years ago that he drew me into himself. And I'm so thankful that he has given me that rest in my life. A native of China wanted to become a Christian. But he couldn't understand how Christianity was superior to Confucianism and to Buddhism. So he wanted to know. One morning he came to the Christian missionary. He was in a happy mood and he said, I dreamed last night. And said, now I understand. He said, I dreamed I'd fallen into a deep pit where I lay helpless and despairing. And Confucius came. And he said, let me give you advice, son, my friend. If you get out of your trouble, never get in again. And then he said, Buddha came by and said, if you will climb up to where I am and where I can reach you, I will help you. And then he said, Jesus Christ came by. I'm here in this pit, down in the bottom of this deep pit. And Jesus Christ claimed, climbed down into the pit. And he carried me out. And he said, now I understand. It takes the Savior of man to do that. Only a Savior would stoop so low to save a sinful soul like mine and like yours. So why did He come? The world thinks again, you know, it's just parties and, and money and gifts and, and fun and festivities. Why did He come? Why was He born? 
Well, to declare the truth, to destroy the devil, to die for sinners, and to draw the lost unto himself. And if you're here today and you're lost, you know what? He would draw you to him today. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed.